There are presently many options that allow the creation of online learning environments. If created carefully, online learning environments have the potential to engage students using current learning theory, differentiated instruction, freely available and up-to-date web resources, and collaborative technologies. At Hanover High School, where I currently teach, I have identified five possible gap areas that are potential areas of application for online learning. Students who transfer from other schools often lack the background or prior knowledge and need help catching up to our curriculum. Students who want to advance their learning and take college courses while still in school could move ahead and attend Dartmouth during their senior year. Students who have an interest in a specific area may want to earn credits through an enrichment program. Hanover High School also has a Ford Sayer competitive ski program that causes students to miss afternoon classes and also longer trips for three months during the ski season. And additionally, any absences due to health, short-term vacations, long-term vacations as visiting professors often um, leave the area to teach other schools and take their son or daughter with them. And additionally, online learning may also be a method for students to recover credits. However, this population of student often is not motivated and self-directed enough to complete classwork, so I'm not confident online learning would be the best fit for credit recovery. Our district is currently exploring online learning options for students. The push is coming from the school board, who is looking at cost reduction measures to fit budget numbers. One of the concerns I have is that online instruction will replace teachers in the classroom. There are some on board who are seriously considering this as a viable option. Additionally, they believe that cost cutting would be realized with the moving of upper level electives to online learning environments. All three of these options do not seem in line with the motivations of creating an online learning program. In the learning resources for this week, I've extracted some best practices that apply to online learning. First of all, there must be face time with students in order to establish rapport and allow students to have a feeling of who is their instructor. There is so much that is lost without nonverbal cues and online courses are limited in how much can be gained from written interaction. Online learning programs must employ Skype, chat rooms, or actual face-to-face -face meeting time as part of the online course. Online learning should be current in its use of issues and problems specific to the subject area. This timeliness of information can be motivating for students and form a direct connection between what they are learning and current events. Online learning should demonstrate the connection between the learning environment and a larger world outside the classroom. When students feel what they are learning is authentic and meaningful in a greater context, they become much more engaged. Virtual manipulatives and simulations can lead to greater student understanding and engagement. If lab equipment is not available, then simulations can fill these gaps. Online environments um, also allow students to interact with experts in their field. Resource, resources such as Ask a Scientist can be integrated so that students can pose questions and also receive answers from experts. Um, other best practices include giving feedback to students in a timely and accurate manner, especially for students in high school. The more quality feedback, the better a student will do in an online course. Communication and feedback was identified by Smoose 2005 as the most valuable aspect of online courses as cited in Kavanaugh and Clark 2007. Instruction must be tailored to students based on readiness, learning style, interests, and also abilities. As identified by Wong in 2005, here should be, there should be diagnostic sim systems in place that identify poorly learned or well learned concepts. The online curriculum could th then take the results of these identified areas and customize instruction for pace of material and progression. At the Florida Virtual School, teachers coach our students either one on one or in small group sessions and permit them to resubmit work until they have perfected it much like real-world situation where employees continue to refine their work product until it is polished. Young Bertolo and McKellen, 2009, um, this revision should be encouraged and supported with instructor feedback during online instructional times. Kevin on Clark, 2007, also reported students feeling frustrated and isolated um, when interaction was limited. Online courses must have structure that enables collaboration and flow of ideas among students. 
Through my analysis of current research and online learning, I feel there are three areas that must be taken into consideration when designing online learning modules in our district. First of all, decision makers in online learning must obtain input from instructors with experience in taking online courses and teaching online courses. Classroom teachers should be actively involved in making the decisions necessary to begin offering courses online or with a hybrid model. The program should allow teachers to move courses online and reward them for working with students in ways that traditional classrooms fail. Don't focus on quantity, but quality when implementing online learning. Online learning should not be viewed as a cost-cutting measure, but an opportunity to engage students and improve instruction. Finally, any upper-level electives that lend themselves well to online learning should be expanded, yet lab courses or discussion-based courses may be more effective within the traditional environment. In an effort to create an effective online learning environment, the program should allow expert teachers to instruct other teachers how online learning is best supported, implemented, and continued. Time and money need to be allocated to allow professional development and refining of skills for online teaching. The program should allow for the creation of small supportive groups focused on improving instruction online. There should be a plan in place to constantly assess and improve instruction online. As with classroom teaching, online teaching needs to be evaluated and improved consistently and constantly. Online learning allows many opportunities for engaging students who are not served by the traditional classroom environment. Online learning must be based on best practices supported by time and funding and be targeted to individual learners. A one-size-fits-all educational system is no longer an option. Online learning must strive to meet the individual needs of students. I'm hopeful that as technology advances, online learning will only improve in its ability to allow student-centered learning environments.